If you look at what happened during the regional bank crisis this year, uh, we learned a very important lesson. Uh, we had regional banks' stocks plummeting, some of them going bankrupt, and Bitcoin rose from 19000 to 30000 What did that tell us? It tells us that because of the decentralization and the transparency in the network, uh, that counterparty risk is not an issue uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, and so there was a flight to safety into Bitcoin. Think about that. Uh, as bank stocks were plummeting, that spoke very loudly to me. And I think the other reason uh, people have been reticent is they heard about FTX. Uh, and if they think about FTX, though, uh, uh, FTX proved the point uh, that you really want to be involved with a Bitcoin network and not something like an FTX. Why? Bitcoin is transparent and decentralized. FTX was completely centralized, completely opaque, and a fraud. Uh, it, you know, uh, Sam Bankman Fried did not like Bitcoin. And uh, I understand why. He thought he was a master of the universe and could, could control everything. Well, he couldn't control Bitcoin. And that's its beauty. That's its beauty. Um, so now with the ETF, what is going on? Uh, I think, you know, we know the research people at the SEC and they know what they're talking about. They are really good. We've met uh, the head of FinHub now who reports directly to uh, uh, Chairman Gensler. And for me, the disconnect is they know so much and they are so good uh, that um, I believe this was much more Gary Gensler standing in the way. Um, I don't know for sure because they could never say something like that. I just know from uh, how they, how we have discussed uh, Bitcoin with them, that they really understand it and they understand its merits. Uh, most important. Bitcoin is eyeing $30,000. It's found support around $28,150 and is climbing upwards. A rising channel towards $30,000 is forming, but risks exist in this volatile market. The battle for the first spot Bitcoin AFF approval is heating up. BlackRock, one of the giants in asset management, filed amendments to its application with the SEC. This move follows similar amendments made by ARK Invest and Fidelity, underlining the fierce competition in the race. In these amendments, BlackRock provides more details about its ETF, including the custodians for Bitcoin and cash holdings. The amendments also touch on pricing details, which are vital in the world of ETS. Notably, this competition includes Grayscale, the largest Bitcoin trust fund. After Grayscale's courtroom win against the SEC, the entire landscape of Bitcoin ETFs is shifting. The SEC's stance is under scrutiny and the industry is pushing for regulatory clarity. BlackRock's move could be a game-changer in the race to launch the first spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States. The Bitcoin ETF saw that is far from over. Mike Novogratz, CEO of Galaxy Digital, predicts that by the end of 2023, the SEC's stance on Bitcoin ETFs will shift. Currently, the SEC allows futures ETFs but not cash ones, a contradiction that is causing growing demand from the American public. The pressure on the SEC is immense, coming from industry giants like BlackRock, Fidelity, Grayscale, and Invesco. This push for regulatory clarity and approval reflects the shifting landscape of digital assets. The SEC's current position seems inconsistent, and this is driving a heightened optimism for Bitcoin ETF approval. The Bitcoin ETF journey began in 2013 with the application by the Winklevoss twins. If approved, these ETFs could pave the way for Bitcoin to become a compliant security for stock exchange trading. Influences on this potential shift include Grayscale Investments' court win, pressure from lawmakers and industry stakeholders, and even a fake news application from BlackRock. The approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs could potentially trigger the next bull cycle for Bitcoin, creating excitement in the market. Let's continue our discussion with Kathy Wood. If you look back to what happened in the 70s, and many people fear that we are in uh, a period like the 70s now, especially hearing all of these wage negotiations and settlements, 10% per year, that feels very 70s. Uh, I personally do not think we're in the 70s, but but just to help people understand what can happen when you uh, when you basically um, 
unhinge monetary policy, close the gold exchange standard. Um, the, the lack of discipline started in the 60s, actually. Vietnam War and great society, so guns and butter. Uh, you know, the government could pay for everything. Sound familiar? Sound familiar, right? And what happened back then is over 15 years, the, the Fed accommodated profligate government spending. Uh, so it just started with Vietnam and great society, and it only got worse. So that was a 15-year-plus period by the time Volcker got in, and, and he had to crack the whip, namely starve uh, the economy of money relative to what it had been used to. Um, and not course, at the debt levels that we have now. <laughs> right, right. And debt, exactly. Uh, and, and so we ended up with double-digit inflation. And uh, I remember uh, with uh, surtaxes, businesses had to pay in interest uh, more than 20%. That's like, that was just a killer. Um, inflation was eating, absolutely destroying purchasing power. So, and I remember my father back then, I remember my, my dear, dear father back then, uh, you know, talking to me about it and saying, and talking to my mother, especially, and I would overhear these conversations, you know, I, I, you know, our, our pay, my paycheck we can't buy as, as much food. You know, this is this is terrible. Um, so why is it not the same thing now? Because we have prof profligate spending in the U.S. and um, and the debt levels are just incredible. Uh, part of the reason is I think monetary policy is making a different mistake. Uh, so M uh, M two growth is negative on a year over year basis. And uh, that means uh, the Fed is not accommodating this government spending. But what it also means is the government spending is going to crowd out the private sector. And I think you're beginning to see that happen now. We think there's going to be a harder landing. Um, so why don't people you know, take the lessons of history? OK, I've just given you two periods <laughs> and... Uh, and look at what Bitcoin's trend has been. And if you look at our, if, if you become a reader of our Bitcoin Monthly, I, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, Natalie. It's, uh, we put it out monthly, and it's um, uh, a lot of David Puel's uh, on-chain analytics and, and analytics that he created himself. What it does is it monitors the health of the network and gives you a sense of the fundamental dynamics uh, taking place in the Bitcoin network. It's phenomenal what we can learn. It's so much more transparent than the Fed, which issues these minutes in cryptic uh, notes, which and then has every Fed uh, member come out and contradict each other. So you have absolutely no idea uh, what they really think and what's really going to happen. Uh, you can see everything on the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. And we, we've we even been able to identify when uh, trouble was brewing because of the algorithmic stable coins and the hedge fund exposure and just watching the, the money move around. We knew there were uh, that uh, a, a number of hedge funds, we guessed correctly, were hurting. So uh, why don't people uh, pay more attention to this? I think because it's very volatile still. And, you know, and what's the alternative in their minds? Well, you know, uh, the prices in the real world aren't that volatile uh, and interest rates aren't that volatile. Uh, so they're they're making false comparisons, I think, Um and it just seems like Bitcoin is in the in as you say it is in the earliest days, and so is it in the wild west? And um, and what we do in our analysis is show yes, it's volatile. So pick your spots. But uh, and and my children are averaging down, you know, weekly uh, or averaging in weekly. Uh, so. Uh, I, and they're very happy because if you look over time what has happened with Bitcoin, the trend is definitely up. Higher highs, 
and higher lows, right? And uh, that's very reassuring. And we also have a chart in Big Ideas where you can see the returns from Bitcoin over a three, four, five year period, and they outperform all other assets. But you have to have that uh, long term a time horizon, I think. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.